In a previous tutorial, we looked at how to create this form-based question. So uh, when you first create a question, you've got this form. I can add my question in here, my choices, customize my feedback, and in this case we added a picture. And then you can see this kind of gives me that form-based look. So let's preview this. And you can see I've got this kind of standard form quiz question look. Uh, and that's fine if I want to do real quick quiz questions, but let's say I want to do something that's more custom or meets the needs I have. So what I can do is in QuizMaker I can go from form view to slide view. And so what slide view does is it gives me a um, view of the slide and I can edit it similar to how I would work with Storyline or PowerPoint. So what I have here is my text boxes, I've got my form for the quiz, and I've got this uh, picture in here. So I may not want this particular look. I may want to create something that looks different. So that's what we're going to do right now. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to delete this picture and I'll just get rid of the template element as well. So I've got that. Now I want to put my um, fruit around the screen and let you choose the fruit uh, visually rather than uh, using the form. So when I select this, you can see I've got this kind of outside border. That's my form. So I'm going to make this a little wider so I can move my objects around. And you can see I've got apple, banana, orange. I'm going to hit shift and select all three of them. And then I can drag these over. And so now these are individual items that I can move within the form. So I'm going to grab, we're going to grab the apple and move it down here. Uh, we'll, we'll do this. We'll put the banana up here and um, we'll take the orange and we'll move the orange here. So now I've got my text. It's moving. You know, it's, it's where I want it laid out. What I can do is add some images. So I'm just going to go to insert. I can insert a picture. So in this case, I'm just going to choose uh, these individual um, fruit rather than the, the three in one fruit. So I'm going to insert those. Let me go ahead and um, select that. I need to scale these down here. So I should have done that before. So I can do them all together. Okay, so I've got my apple. We'll put the apple here for now. And we'll put that on top of here. We'll put the banana right here. And we'll put the orange right here. So you can see I can uh, create my own layout and look for the slides. And again, because this is like a slide in PowerPoint, I can put whatever I background and I can do all sorts of things to dress up the look of the screen. So I'm not stuck with that form look. Now the other thing you can do is a lot of people do when they do this is they cover up uh, the text. So now instead of having a text-based question, you've got an image-based question. Now one thing you want to keep in mind if you do that is you'll notice we've got the shuffle option here so I can shuffle the answers. Let's see what happens. I'm going to put the apple banana and orange up here. So if we preview this, you'll see it's shuffling the answers. And because it shuffled the answers, the pictures aren't lined up. So the pictures aren't shuffling, just the, the choices are. So if you end up doing something where um, you've got images and text and they need to be together, uh, you want to make sure that you turn the shuffling off uh, just so that the answers and the pictures are linked together. Otherwise, they're going to get all the questions wrong and they'll be complaining and, and you may get fired. <laughs> so anyway, so that's uh, working with customizing the screen. Now, uh, you can also modify the feedback. One thing you'll notice in slide view is that you have the correct and incorrect feedback layers. So at this point, you can change the stuff on the screen here. If you want to change the template that's used for the feedback layers, just go up to View, and then you can see Feedback Master. And when you click on that, you can see here's the main slide. So let's just go ahead. We'll turn this. Um, let's just just uh, let's make it light green. So you can see here's my main slide. And you can see how then it impacts these. Um, you can you can get rid of this. You know I'll delete it. There's all sorts of things you can do um, with that. And then you can modify the specific feedback. So here's the correct feedback. Let's say uh, for the correct feedback, I want to insert a check. So I think we have a little check mark. So I can insert a check mark here. And then that just lets me know that's my correct feedback. So 
If we close this, we'll notice here on correct feedback, there's a check mark on incorrect, there's not. If I wanted to put an X in there, I could do that. And so a lot of things you can do uh, with the feedback layers there as well. So you can customize the screen itself and then you can customize the feedback and so visually you can have something that looks more than um, like it would if you were using that form. The other thing you can do on feedback if you go to form view uh, you could uh, get rid of all the text here in feedback and then go to more so get rid of the text here. If you leave it blank you could branch to a specific slide so you can put a blank slide and put all your feedback on the blank slide and then uh, when they answer the question if they get it right or wrong you can direct them to a specific slide rather than give them uh, the feedback. So a lot of neat things you can do with that to customize that. The one thing we'll look at now is the timeline and the timeline's pretty basic. A timeline represents the timing of the objects on the screen. So for example we've got the fruit here and let's say I want the fruit to come in at one second intervals. So I've got my apple and then I'll have the banana come in but I'm going to move this over to one second mark. We'll take the orange and we'll have that move over to the two second. Oops. We'll have it move over to the two second mark. So the way the timeline is going to work it's going to drag across here and you'll notice that the apple's there, the banana is going to come in and then the orange is going to come in. So if we preview this you can see the way the timeline works. And so one second, one second. And uh, if we wanted to add animations to that, we can select all three of these. We go to animations and we can have some entrance animations. So let's say we want them to grow in, right? So let's preview this. So they're going to come in, they're going to grow. Zoom, zoom, and zoom. And we can also do exit animation. So to have an exit animation, we need to have it Oops, let's see here. We're going to have this. Let's do this. We'll have it come and go at um, at intervals here. So we'll just have this one drop off after a second. So we're going to select these again. And then what we'll do is we're going to do an exit animation and we'll just have it um, shrink out. So what we should see is they should come up, go out, and uh, let's preview this. So go up, come in, go out, and then you can see how that works. And you could obviously do something that makes more sense for your quiz. But basically that's the way the timeline works. So you can have, you can uh, time objects and when they come on or off the screen. And then you can use animations. You have entrance animations and exit animations. And then these are your transitions uh, for the slides and questions. So that's basically the way it works and then it's just a matter of playing around with that. So you can customize, uh, you can go with the form view for quick entry of your information and go to slide view and customize that and then create all sorts of really interesting uh, quiz questions.